All right, in this episode of Universe the Game, we're going to talk again about the declassified gateway experience, and we've covered in the previous episodes Transcendental Meditation and Hypnosis. But now we're getting to biofeedback. Okay, what I thought biofeedback was in today's society is not exactly what this is. This is actually very intriguing. So we're just going to read it, read through it, discuss it, and kind of go from there and give you some commentary so that you can actually make sense of what this means. Okay, so the third consciousness altering methodology, which will be briefly described, is biofeedback. Biofeedback is somewhat unique in that it is actually employs the self-cognitive powers of the left hemisphere to gain access to such areas of the right brain as the lower cerebral, motor cortex sensory cortices, and the assorted pain or pleasure centers. So this is a key. Instead of suppressing the left hemisphere, as is done in hypnosis, or largely bypassing and ignoring it, as is done in trans transcendental meditation, biofeedback teaches the left hemisphere first to visualize the desired result and then to recognize the feelings associated with the experience of successful right hemisphere access to the specific lower cerebral cortex, pain or pleasure, or other areas in the manner needed to produce the desired result. So, in essence, let's just stop there because it kind of can get confusing. Let's reword this in today's technology. Or not technology, terminology, terminology. What they're saying is, is instead of suppressing the left hemisphere, or think of that as a subconscious mind, instead of suppressing, or the conscious mind, the conscious mind, oh God. Okay, let's read that again. Instead of suppressing the left hemisphere or the conscious mind, as is done in hypnosis, or largely bypassing and ignoring it, as is done in transcendental meditation, biofeedback teaches the left hemisphere, or the conscious mind, first to visualize the desired result, and then to recognize the feelings associated with the experience of successful right hemisphere access to the specific cortex or other area to produce the desired result. Doesn't this remind you of Dr. Joe Dispenza? Again, we talked about him. In the last time, we talked about Transcendental Meditation in the last episode. But in this episode, it's the same thing, kind of. We're also talking about his work. What does he tell you to do? He tells you to visualize it, not even... not. He never uses the word visualize, but he tells you to experience it. And if you listen to his meditations, you know what I mean. He <laughs> to experience it with all of your senses, and then feel as if it is already done. And that's exactly what Neville Goddard teaches assume as though your wish is fulfilled it's the same concept same concept so this is what biofeedback does and it turns out this might have an effect on your reality externally so this might have an effect on manifestation uh, in this type of thing and we can see this playing out as we continue to understand what they're getting at here so special self-monitoring devices such as the di digital thermometer are used to inform the left brain when it succeeds in keying the right hemisphere into accessing the appropriate area. Once this is done, the left brain can then repeatedly instruct the right brain to reestablish the pathways involved so as to produce the same external objective measures of success. This is pretty much exactly Dr. Joe Spence's work. In this way, the pathways are strengthened and emphasized to such an extent that the left brain consciousness is enabled to access appropriate areas in the right brain using a conscious demand mode. You can access areas in your subconscious mind very easily once you learn how to use biofeedback. For example, if the subject wishes to increase the circulation in the left leg in order to speed up healing, he may concentrate with his left brain on achieving that result while carefully monitoring a digital thermometer con connected to the left leg. When the concentrated effort begins to achieve success, the digital thermometer will register an increase in temperature of the left leg. At that point, the subject can mentally, left brain, associate the sensations experienced with the result achieved and can begin to emphasize by memory recall the same process to cause its strengthening by affirmation and repetition. In this way, pain can be blocked. Healing can be enhanced 
malignant tumors can apparently be suppressed and ultimately destroyed, the body's pleasure centers can be stimulated and a variety of specific psychological results may be achieved. In addition, biofeedback may be used to greatly accelerate achievement of deep meditative states, particularly for beginners who have no experience in meditative techniques and whose progress in that methodology is enhanced through effective visualization and external objective affirmation. Display of the subject's brainwave pattern on a cathode ray tube has proven to be a laboratory validated means by which subjects may quickly learn to place themselves in profoundly relaxed states characterized by the sort of quietude and singularity of mental focus associated with advanced meditation. So essentially, biofeedback is using your left brain's power to access the right brain. Instead of bypassing it like hypnosis, you just completely let go of your critical analytical mind or the conscious mind. And then people, you can self-hypnotize yourself, but more what I'm referring to at this moment is when you have people, you might go to hypnoregression or you might have uh, psych K or these type of things. These bypass it. And then the transcendental meditation just ignores it and it just happens. We talked about that in the last episode. And you can watch either one of those episodes for more context on how those work. With biofeedback, what we're actually doing here is we're using the conscious mind to control our external environment. And it's possible, you know, this is what this document is telling us that you can block pain, you can enhance your healing, you can. Suppress tumors and destroy tumors. You can activate your body's pleasure centers all through the conscious mind. And I want you to also imagine that you can have an effect on your external reality. Let's take a little bit of a leap here and see, kind of like Dr. Joe Dispenza does, that if I can change how my body is, if I can affect my body through my conscious mind's intent to reprogram my subconscious or to access the right hemisphere of the brain, then it's very possible to me that I could actually affect the events that happen in my life. What comes to me from the, you could say, the quantum field through the different potentials, different timelines. If we're talking about the many worlds interpretation, that I might be able to jump timelines through my conscious intent. Now, that's a little bit of a leap compared to what this document is saying, but I've seen evidence and a lot of evidence for this actually to be the case. So I'm not saying it is or it isn't, just open up your mind to the possibility that how you consciously are choosing to think fee and feel and what you choose to identify with, with the, the right hemisphere or the thinking patterns or the subconscious mind, whatever you want to call it, that these actually have an effect not only on your body, the harmony in your body, what happens to you in terms of uh, chronic, chronic illnesses, uh, such as like you could have, your body could break down as a response to your subconscious or as a response to your own belief in it. I've heard of things such as people, the kind of placebo where people believe they're going to get old at a certain age or that their body's going to age, that their body does age. It's actually not due to anything besides their own belief that has control of it. Now I know that there's obviously some things that we can't control in there, but again, just contemplate that this is possible. How your conscious mind affects not only your body, but also your reality as a whole. So you can train your conscious mind and your subconscious or your left and right hemispheres to work together in synchronicity. Not synchronicity, but synchronously, rather. So we're going to talk more in the next episode when we get into hemisync and these other things about how that process works. But what I want you to start to realize is that you can have an effect on your reality, on your body, through your conscious mind, and that what you are thinking, how you perceive, has a massive effect on what actually happens in your life and what actually happens with your body, and that that actually might be resulting from unconscious ways of thinking, that we might be identified with thinking patterns through the subconscious mind, that, again, with biofeedback, we can go in and rewire the pathways to be the way that we want it to be. You have the power. And you can even use this, as it says in the second part here, 
to enter profoundly relaxed states. And that this has been tested. Display of a subject's brainwave pattern on a catheter ray tube has proven to be laboratory validated means by which subjects can learn to place themselves in relaxed states. So you can put yourself in a relaxed state. The environment, of course, to some respect, might seem at first like the environment has a control over you, but it doesn't. You ultimately have the free will. And you can be in advanced states of mental focus no matter what's happening. And, you know, this is more along the advanced. But what I talk about a lot of times are advanced things. So very interesting kind of first three that we covered here with the biofeedback, the transcendental meditation, and um, with the hypnosis. And, you know, we're just getting started. We haven't even gotten into the actual document. These are just the prerequisites. So now that you understand these... You've reached the end of the first part of this breakdown. It will make much more sense going into these next techniques to understand the left hemisphere is the conscious mind and the right is the subconscious. And so when we talk about the left and right throughout this entire series, as we're probably going to do at least 30 more videos on this, hopefully it will make much more sense. And that's what the documents said. You should have an understanding before you get this. So I hope that this helps you to understand these documents. And uh, yeah, if you did enjoy this breakdown, throw a like for us if you're on YouTube here because YouTube really likes and promotes the videos when you do that. And so more people get to see this profound information. And if you also enjoyed it, feel free to consider subscribing to the channel here where we continue to break these down and also maybe hit the little bell thing so you get the notifications when I go live with another podcast here on the nature of these declassified documents and many other things when it comes to consciousness as that's what we're doing here we're exploring consciousness and if you'd rather listen to these episodes of course they're always on spotify and apple Podcasts. and if you are listening on spotify or apple Podcasts, very good you found the podcast i hope you're enjoying it from those platforms okay i'll talk to you in the next episode and until then peace